So I'm going to cover the Docker Compose file quick. I can just click into it, and this is the same file we just saw used in the previous video. Docker Compose has two versions. We're using version two, which is the latest, which has some new features. And here we define some services. Now services are technically just containers to run, but they're called services because there's a little bit more going on. We can name them anything we want. I've named this Nginx PHP Redis in DB. The names are actually arbitrary, but keeping them in line with what they actually are is usually a best practice. Next, we're gonna tell Docker what image to use. This is gonna pull from Docker Hub, which is just hub.docker.com, if it doesn't have the image locally on your computer. Now, I've built two of these for the purpose of this demonstration. So shipping Docker is an account on Docker Hub. We can look that up. We can see I have my Nginx and PHP containers there. So that's gonna pull those if they're not there. Next, for Nginx, it's going to share port 80 on my local computer with port 80 in the containers. That's why I'm able to go to localhost here at port 80, because that is going into the Docker containers through this shared port. And Nginx is listening in port 80 inside of the container, so that all works. Volumes. So Nginx and PHP have both shared the local application directory. That's the one where we put Laravel into. So we have the application directory here. That's relative to the Docker Compose YAML file. If I list out what's inside of the application directory, we see our Laravel application. So the Docker containers see the contents of the application directory inside of the var dubdub HTML directory inside of the container. So the Nginx and PHP containers both have a var dubdub HTML directory which has the contents of application. Now finally, Nginx and PHP and really all these containers are also inside of the network called AppNet. And down here we define that network named AppNet. So what this says is to tell Docker Compose to create this Docker network of type bridge, which is the default type, that just creates a small local network that only Docker can use, and it puts each container inside of that network. It's like a little private network that the containers can use to speak to each other. And Nginx, PHP, Duretus, DB, whatever the name of this service is, whatever we name this container, becomes the host name for that container. So DB will resolve to the IP address of the MySQL container that we've created here. Redis is very simple because using Redis is simple. We just get the image, we put it in the network, and then PHP can connect and talk to it. The database one is a little bit more complex, but still fairly easy. We're using the official MySQL repository from the Docker Hub. Within it, it tells us we can set some environment variables. So the first time the MySQL database spins up, it will set these usernames and passwords and create this database. Now these are also the default found in a Laravel M file. So I just use the default so we can keep using it in development. It's kind of the same way Homestead works, where the defaults are just there and will work for you. We've shared a new volume here. Now this is a named volume that we define here. And what this does is tell Docker or compose to create a new volume when you spin this up. And actually when you destroy this service, this set of Docker containers, the volume remains, it does not delete it. So you can reuse it. So that's why in the first video I showed us doing Docker compose down to destroy that set of containers and then Docker compose up and the database still existed. So the database image has code around it to detect if a varlib MySQL data directory exists, if it already has MySQL data in it. And if it does, it reuses it. Otherwise it reinitializes MySQL. Once again, this is also in the network app net so that all these containers can speak to each other. So uh, just to reiterate, once again, down here, we've defined a network to create. This will get destroyed when we do Docker Compose down as well. It can get created and destroyed as much as we need. The volume will get created here also. It's driver local, so it's just a local data storage on our computer. And when you destroy all these containers via Docker Compose down, it actually does not destroy the volume in case you want to reuse it. It does it pretty safely. So that is the Docker Compose file in a nutshell. Creating them and using them is not too bad as long as you know a little bit of the underlying concepts, which we're going to cover in next videos.